This is good. Progress. Hello, everyone. We are having a tiny technical difficulty here getting started. Glitched out, but you're back now. OK, great. So we have a really exciting panel today for our broadcaster roundtable of some amazingly talented artists. Uh, thank you for everyone for tuning in here. Yeah, it looks like people can see and hear me. This is great. Um, while you're watching, do tell us where you are viewing from today. And uh, please help me welcome on our first guest here. We'll introduce people in order here briefly. We have a really fun panel of four artists. Bobby, I would love to invite you up on the screen with me first here. Bobby Bicker is uh, one of our close friends here at HAPS. Bobby, hello there. Hello, How are you? Hello. Hi, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me here. I'm yeah. so excited. Amazing artist. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Peter. Uh, hey, Bobby, can you yeah. introduce yourself? Let's pretend that, you know, uh, folks here may not be familiar with you. Introduce kind of your work uh, briefly, and uh, we'll invite some of our other guests up on screen one by one to do the same here. Then we'll open it up to some questions, have a discussion. Yes. Well, I don't have to pretend because every day that's how I open my broadcasts because I never assume anybody knows me. So it's a fresh start. So hi, everybody, and welcome to Hubs. My name is Bobby Becker, and I'm a multidimensional artist based in London, and I do live streaming for the last six years. Uh, well, first it was Periscope, and now I have moved to Hubs TV, and I love it here. The team is amazing as Peter have been very helpful and Pablo and everybody on Hubs and uh, the community from Periscope is here. Well, most of them. And uh, I am so excited. We have another surprise today. You're going to see on screen later on. But yes, most of the artists are coming because we're looking for new homes. But uh, yeah, pretty much I have been painting uh, most of my life and uh, since I was a little kid pretty much and I do um, lots of um, fabric painting so wearable art oil painting acrylics mixed media marker pens I do murals anything I can paint I can lay my brushes on I do and also on the side I do makeup and body painting I also teach sometimes at uh, um, London School of Beauty and Makeup, mentoring like young kids, and I do some school projects around my area. So yeah, pretty much that's about me. If you have questions, you know, we're gonna continue the conversation, but that's an intro. Thank you for that. And uh, next I'd like to invite up on screen, Liza Donnelly. Liza, oh, let's see here. Liza, are you with us? Oh uh, yeah, yes. you dropped you dropped out there for a second. I, I lost you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My apologies. I think my connection today is struggling. Uh, yeah, uh, my apologies. But Liza, thank you so much for joining us, Liza. One of our you know fantastic uh, close friends here at Haps too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You tell Thanks. some of those in the audience, you know, what you're all about and about your art. Yeah, it's great to be here with all these great artists. I love I love everybody here and uh, you guys. HAPS is great, really welcoming group of people. Um, so I, I've been a, an artist all my life since I was a girl, a little girl, drawing cartoons. And um, after uh, uh, I went to school and college, I started submitting to The New Yorker and I, I sold pretty soon after I, I started. So I've been with The New Yorker magazine as a cartoonist for a long time. Um, and I love it, uh, but in the last, and many other magazines too, and I write for other magazines as well, but uh, in the last five years I've been doing something called live uh, journalism, digital drawing, um, um, uh, visual journalism I call it, and it's uh, I live draw on my tablet uh, news events and cultural events, and I've done that for CBS and CNN and The New Yorker and other places, and um, during the pandemic I, I I uh, started doing it in my studio. So not on my tablet, but with paper and pen and uh, watercolors. And people seem to really enjoy seeing seeing the act of creation, which I know the other artists here um, know that because we're, we're receiving all the, all the viewership. So um, it's just really a joy to be able to, to communicate with everybody um, 
on um, on Habs. So that's uh, that's and I'm writing I'm writing a book about women cartoonists. That's my other my other um, passion is 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 uh, feminism and women's rights around the world. So I love it. That's thank me. As well. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, as we introduce everyone, be sure to subscribe to Bobby to Liza and uh, our next guest I'll bring up on screen now, Michelle Alexander, uh, who goes by Native Graffiti here on Haps. Michelle, welcome. How are you? Hi, Ani Bouchou, everybody. Hello. What is up? <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. This is great. So wonderful to have you with us. Uh, can you introduce some of uh, your craft and, uh, you know, let folks know what they can expect if they subscribe to you? Okay, well, I consider myself a visual storyteller, but my story goes back, everybody talks about like when they were young, they started drawing. I grew up in a family where my mother was a portrait artist and um, she taught all three of us, my uh, twin brother, my older brother and myself how to draw. But um, for me, um, between my dad being a musician and my mom being an artist, I was diagnosed very early with um, high functioning autism and my first diagnosis was actually as a savant and um i you know was entered into drawing contests and things like that from a very young age i could do um i could do art but it to me it was a language that i could use before i could really even speak so that's kind of um having a voice and telling stories and and mostly gravitating towards portraits is is pretty much what i do um of course with my cultural heritage and background so i love that i can tell the stories of people especially women powerful women women of color women um from my own heritage and and you know that visibility needs to be out there and i just love that i can do that and it's great that to do it on half so i'm really happy about this Absolutely. We're <laughs> thrilled to have you in our community as well. And, uh, you know, really excited to have such an amazing panel today. Uh, our next guest uh, is a recent uh, HAPS user. Amrit, would you like to join us up here on screen? Let's invite you up here. Might as well. Why not, eh? Um, <laughs> wonderful. So, Amrit, thank you. This is Amrit's first time being on a broadcast here at HAPS. Uh, those of you may recognize him from other platforms uh, and obviously a very well-known sculptor in so many circles. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, I'd love for you to introduce yourself and uh, to the community here today, Amrit. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Like uh, like you said, I'm brand new to this. I mean, like day one. Um, I have Bobby to blame, so she's the one who dragged me over <laughs> here. But I'm actually really <laughs> excited because I recognize a ton of people in the chat. So just to introduce myself, my name is Amrit Singh. I am the creative director at a content creation agency and training provider based in the UK. But I also run an international art brand. Um, I create intricate ink art inspired by nature and culture. And I also do a lot of public art sculptures around the UK. Um, I've won a, a few awards. I've exhibited my art in over 25 exhibitions in around the US, in around Europe and the UK. And uh, I've been live streaming again for six years on and off. I managed to quit my job uh, four years ago because of the success of live streaming and my art brand. And uh, here I am in front of you guys and hoping to live stream in front of you guys because I'm actually really excited to do it. It sounds like a brilliant community. So thank you. Yeah, no, our pleasure. So great to have you here with us. Uh, glad. I think many folks recognize you as well, uh, judging from the comments here in our community. Um, one question that I have for each of you uh, is, you know, can you tell us a little bit about uh, why you like broadcasting uh, your process, you know, and maybe we can start with Bobby. I'll go back to you. Um, we'd love to hear more from you about your perspective on that, you know, why do you broadcast yourself uh, and your art? What motivates you? Can oh, you, you came back to me. I was I was talking to Amrit. Me. <laughs> no, I was saying oh, Amrit is an OG of Periscope, and I'm like, what? Why is not Amrit here? Because if I'm not doing <laughs> sorry, I think you're on mute. My apologies. Yeah, other other people. So now, you you a hopster. Amrit officially and I like that word. 
What a way to start your journey on Hubs being here with other artists. Amazing. And I love to have you here and like amongst us because we missed you anyway. So what started me in live streaming? Huh? It was coincidence. I wasn't about to do live streaming. I, I never thought I'm going to get to live streaming. I was um, doing an exhibition actually. And, um, uh, I was doing also, I had paintings in the wall. I was doing life uh, body painting as well. And I had some of my models wearing some of the uh, clothes I had painted, wearable art. So it was kind of a com combination of all my talents. So I, I put on a mini fashion show, all my artwork in walls and doing the body painting. So one of my friends, she, she never joined again. She, I think seems to just do that broadcast on Periscope that six years ago. And then she never continued to do it, but she went live, put the camera on my face. And it's like, look, Bobby is like a thousand people watching you doing body painting. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? What do you mean? And uh, then she said, oh, is this new app? It's just done. You know, it's just come out. It's called Periscope and it's really cool. People watch you live. I'm like really okay you like it so i downloaded it when i came home after the exhibition but i did not go live for a while i was checking people out you know how everybody did things because in the back of my mind i thought hmm people not really going to be interested in body painting or what you can show because sometimes you know it's a little bit of a uh, semi-nudity involved and uh before we kind of cover the models and then I thought, okay, art, would people be interested in seeing art? Because I was seeing a lot of people just mm -hmm. walking about, showing their towns and what have you. Uh, but then I discovered artists and Amrit was there and other people doing a bit. Not much though, not much art. It was more like showing places. So I, I thought, okay, I'm going to have a go. And I started, I just turned the camera on with my dodgy Wi-Fi. Uh, I was really bad and oh my God, it's vertical and hey, am I on? Can you guys see? And then 10 minutes we had to stay straight because we never knew which shot the camera is going to grab for our uh, picture. Remember, guys? So I'm like, okay, guys, don't make me laugh. So I would oh, stay. The thumbnail <laughs> <in it. laughs> yeah, but it was, um, yeah, that's what started like six years ago. Coincidence started. But I, then I fell in love with the people that supported me. Everybody being encouraging and uh, supporting and I just got the bug and I could not stop. And even if I felt like giving up, a lot of times I, I felt like giving up. And then when you think about the community and I get so many emails and messages from people thanking me and urging me, oh, please, can you do a coffee chat today? I'm feeling low and it's like, I look forward to your coffee chats and I am bedridden and that's what I look forward to every day. And I'm like, what? It's just a coffee chat. But then you never know what you know how you impact people it could be a coffee chat for me but somebody that is in bed does nothing and i give them a little bit of hope and entertainment and the community sense everybody sharing stories then they feel part of that community and i love that and uh, besides the art tutorial some people join even if they don't like art is what i like i like building that community my room is fun room so you come grab a coffee and just chill and communicate with each other that's about it i'm gonna give uh, you know the mic back to somebody else because i could go on forever <laughs> <laughs> no bobby we appreciate that and you know art does have the power to really just make someone's day if nothing else you know much more power than that but often you know that's what we see here too and liza would love to just go back in order um how did you get started you know broadcasting some of your live uh, editorial cartooning and such you know um a lot of what what bobby said but I, years ago, I, I started, well, I love technology, so I had my iPhone, probably my first iPhone, I don't remember, and I sort of held it over my hand and drew something on a paper with a with a crow quill pen and put it out there on Twitter and immediately realized that people loved seeing that. And um, it was very close up and you could hear the scritch of the pen. And uh, I didn't really talk back then, although now I talk when I'm drawing. Um, and uh, I think 
I discovered then that people love watching us draw um, for whatever reason. Uh, I think it's in this age of technology, I think it's a connection with, it's a human connection. They can see the hand moving, they can see the creation happening. Um, and then during the pandemic, um, people told me it was soothing. They, they kind of found it uh, meditative, which was really nice to hear. But like Bobby, Right. I've gotten, I do this also on Instagram, which is where I started doing this in this during the pandemic. And people tell me um, that they look forward to it every day. They, 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 it, it brightens their day. And that's you know, so amazing. And I'm just having a, a lot of connection with people that I've never met. And that, oh, I, I, that's why I love Twitter because I, I, when it started, it was, it was like connecting with people, connecting with my audience, connecting with, with like-minded um, folks. Um, and the thing with editorial cartooning, which is what I love doing, um, and the other kind of cartooning too, is that it's really a dialogue. I'm not, I'm not interested in showcasing my opinion necessarily, although that's fine, but I love connecting with others. And, and if I put something out there that you disagree with, you know, tell me, that's fine. It's a dialogue. It's a back and forth. That's what cartooning is. I think it's a, it's a way to, to share in our humanity and, and, uh, enjoy life together so and that's what art is too it doesn't have to be cartooning but um so i love and i love drawing people i love drawing experiences i love when when we're done with the pandemic i can't wait to get out and start drawing things out in the world with my ipad which i've done a little bit on haps i've i've been in new york city and drawn um like times square and um uh, different neighborhoods in new york city and and just talking to people about that and about the creative process so that's right. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I've yes. I've seen a number of viewers described by your work, uh, and actually, probably most of these uh, resonate with the other artists here. But uh, therapeutic is the word that comes to mind. Uh, a lot of people, I think, uh, mm. from home, you know, and I feel that way watching a lot of uh, the mm. live dry out there because I am the least talented person on this screen here, artistically at least. I mean, I'm yeah. I barely passed, you know, uh, the middle school, you know, drawing uh, classes. It was really terrible, but uh, it's just amazing. And I enjoy watching each and every one of you, uh, you know, here on HAPS. And Michelle, I'd love to, you know, throw the question over to you. Um, tell me about, you know, how you got into um, the practice really of broadcasting your live art. Oh, hold on just a second. Somebody, there she is. Okay, it actually comes um, from my work as a chef. I was on Twitter when Periscope came along, and broadcasting um, the first broadcast I had, and the first time I heard about Periscope was when I had a food truck and was running around during the summer, going to festivals, powwows, a lot of native cultural wow. events, art shows, things like that. And so I was broadcasting that and other people. Um, there's this uh, ladies hand drum singing group that is uh, part of this domestic violence shelter um, awareness and fundraising group from my tribe. And um, I think it was one of my first broadcasts was to broadcast that wow. I, I, I helped found that group. And so I was just really excited to just share my, my part of the world in that sense, because I'm like, well, while I'm traveling and doing these, you know, um, events, um, I can show like what life is like. Um, I think it was through Perry girls, but then, of course, it's a seasonal thing. If anybody knows anything about winter in Canada <laughs> right now, <laughs> I can so I mean, in the in the um, in the winter, that's when I go into my studio and draw. Um, drawing is a way of life for me. It's never really been something that I've looked at as an income because it's so much a part of me, like brushing my teeth every day. So it's just this daily meditative practice, like she was talking about. I can totally relate to that. Um, coming home from work, a long shift, 16 hours sometimes. And if I just sit down and I draw, it's like it does something for me. And the fact that um, I was watching other people, I was watching graffiti artists because I used to do graffiti when I was younger. <laughs> and that's like where the native graffiti comes from. Graffiti means making marks. And Ojibwe, the tribe that I'm from, also literally means making marks as you translate it into English. So I'm literally a native person making marks, which goes back to my heritage. But then I wanted like to connect it to me in the present day in the 21st century as a person. And so I just thought, you know, um, 
people, I'm really fascinated by all these people live streaming, like Amrit, I really was inspired by his idea of um, meditation as art and um and i you know bobby the way she does tutorials so i was like watching all these really great artists and um i got encouraged by artists like them to start turning the camera on my own work and it started with inktober of 2015 i believe oh did we freeze did i no we can i can see you oh maybe you froze uh it looks like maybe a connection issue on michelle's end there hopefully she comes back in a minute um yeah, it looks like a local connection issue, perhaps. But uh, Amrit, you're up next. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about how, you know, while we're waiting for Michelle to come back and finish up, uh, you first got involved in broadcasting your process as an artist? Yeah, sure. So it's kind okay. of very similar. I Oh, I'll wait for Michelle to finish Oops. hers. Oh, no, she's gone. <laughs> oh, she's back. <laughs> she's back. <laughs> Is right. she gone? Or is she I gone? broke it. I broke it. Okay. So no, I don't even know no. where it left off. I honestly don't know. I just was trying to ramble on too much. I'm so sorry. No, I not mean, at all. Yeah, we were just uh, since you Canadian left sorry. transitioning to Amrit for a minute there. But uh, is it okay if we uh, segue <laughs> to yeah. in the interest of time, and then we we'll come back uh, to yeah. everyone again multiple okay. times. Thanks, think, Michelle. Uh, Thanks Michelle for being was... Michelle was just finishing with the fact that she's epic and, and brilliant, and that's it. That, that was that's the only thing that she's pushed back to. Like, exactly. you, Michelle, Subscribe to Michelle, you know? everyone. That's it. Oh my god, this is great. Yeah, so live stream was really interesting. I, um, a friend of mine invests in um, uh, social media platforms in stocks and said to me that Twitter have acquired Periscope back in 2015. And um, he sh he said you should you should join it. And I was working a full time job. I was head of design for a housing company, and I was very complacent in my job. You know, when you work to the top, you are managing creatives. You're not doing any creative stuff for yourself. I was complacent. It was good money, and I got boring. I actually saw myself as being a little bit boring. And I said to myself, I need to push myself out of my comfort zone as an introvert who hates being on camera. You know, 10 years plus working in advertising and branding, I've directed campaigns behind the camera, never in front of the camera. So I said to a few of my mates, like, what do, like, what can I do that really pushes me out of my comfort zone? Like, what can I do? And they're like, live stream. Look, this is what happened, you know, join it. And I was like, you mad? Are you crazy? <laughs> and so, that's, but that's exactly what I did. I joined Periscope in March, uh, sorry, in May. And uh, I was curious at first. So I just watched a bunch of live streams. I was a supporter. I was uh, an uplifter. I would jump in, into people's broadcasts and I would um, uplift them and, and really big them up because I feel that's really important. You don't need to necessarily go live instantly. You can be a supporter. I gained a decent following just by being a supporter. People were just like, you know, I like this guy. He's coming, coming to the broadcast. He's like he's saying positive stuff. And whenever he goes live, I want to support him in return. So eventually I went live. And, but it wasn't with art, actually. It was, I was working full time. I was traveling around Europe for work. So I was traveling and live streaming. And I used to do these daily talks called Time to Inspire. And Time to Inspire, I used to work full time. There was woods next to me. And I used to go every single day at lunchtime, 45 minutes, do an inspirational session where we should talk about everything, you know, everything. And it was very, very popular. Uh, but it got a bit too much because I didn't actually have lunch. So I had to uh, stop it after like about six months. Uh, and then it just kind of grew. Um, uh, I I then launched uh, Rebel Creatives, which is actually an online show on Periscope, which was epic. And um, that was in 2016. And what I would do, I would get uh, some of the top creatives and, and live streamers around Periscope and do a back-to-back -back live stream. It was extremely powerful. And I did that for a number of months. Uh, and it was just brilliant. And that just showed me the power of live streaming. So then from there... Um, I didn't actually share my art until August 2016, but 2016 was an insane year. I was uh, doing a talk in Periscope Summit and big up to everyone I met there on two panels, one about the creative community, building a creative community on live streaming, and one how to use live streaming for mindfulness. And then um, someone asked me the question, which was how are you using live streaming for social good? So I went home, 
and I, uh, I connected with Anita Wing Lee, who's another live streamer, and I booked a bunch of uh, holiday, and we did this massive European refugee crisis live stream. We went to Lesbos, Kos, Athens, the Calais jungle, a number of times, Dunkirk refugee camp, oh. Berlin. We live streamed everything, and we went. We reached millions of people. We raised tens of thousands of pounds. We bought coloring books, pen, pencils for children in these camps, and we live streamed everything absolutely everything and it was very very powerful um from then it just showed me the power of live streaming that it's not just for uh bigging ourselves up or not just for our talent but also to give other people a voice as well so in august 2016 i shared my uh, art for the first time intricate in cart um it sh it blew up you know people i didn't have a website i didn't have nothing i wasn't even interested in selling and people were demanding that they wanted to buy my artwork and so that's when ink anima which is my art brand was born in august 2016 and then um because i uh, one month after uh, sharing my art i had my first exhibition in san francisco uh two months after sharing my art i had published my first coloring book which sold worldwide and i did about four reprints before i, I paused it because it actually became my old artwork and then wow. in 2017 i handed my notice and i quit my job to become a full-time content creator and then launch my art brand and my and then all the rest is history so it's been brilliant live stream has been must be powerful i i i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for live streaming that's, that's so me. great yeah thank you so much for sharing your journey that's really amazing and um what i'd like to do next is uh invite uh each of you to share some of the pieces that have been uploaded here with the audience, talk about them uh, briefly. Uh, I know that we have some images uh, as well as I think a video clip and Amrit, uh, you are able to actually upload um, material as well if you'd like. Um, images would be preferable, but uh, I've just made you a director. So if you see there's a little blue button in the bottom right that says upload image or video and you're welcome to do that. Or we can also screen share too, but I, I wanna start with uh, the assets we already have here. And um, Bobby, let's go back to you and let's talk about a few of these images that uh, are here in the studio. Do you mind if I just go in order here with uh, the first one and you can talk about them briefly here? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can Bobby. hear you. Great, let's bring this up on screen. Yep, those are the flowers. I've done this collection of watercolors because uh, mm -hmm. people ask and I delivered. So a lot of them are done. Mm -hmm. Oh, you cut out a little bit there. Bobby, are you with us? Collection. Oh, and they're you're very back. pretty. <clears throat> I think you broke up there for just a, a second on my end uh, with the audio. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, these different, looks like they're paintings or drawings here. I can't tell right now, actually. They were all paintings. Uh, can you hear watercolor. me? Yes. Oh, great. I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Those are watercolors. So I started the collection because mm. uh, I was doing on Periscope, I was doing some uh, paintings in... Um, acrylics so i did some flowers and then one of my followers asked can you do some in watercolors because i want to learn some watercolors and i'm like yeah sure so i hadn't done watercolors in all honesty in ages and now i'm kind of hooked because it's so easy and so quick to clean up and all that so i am doing a lot of watercolors so I did the collection and then after we did some uh, flowers, people is like, oh, can you do some fruit next? Because what I do, I always ask my community. So guys, what you want me to do, they give the ideas, I deliver. So it's all about uh, what my community wants. Whatever they want, I do. So they ask for flowers and then we got carried away and I'm continuing the flowers collection because that led to people asking can you put it in a step-by-step -step book because i would love to purchase one so wow. now i am um, almost done going to publish the book uh putting all of them together just need a few bits to uh fix and uh, yeah i'm gonna get the flowers and i'm gonna do a collection some with fruit That's now, amazing. 
Thanks. I'm, uh, I'm changing this here. I do want you to share that info as soon as that book's out, by the way, with our whole community. Definitely. Body. definitely. Yeah. Now, this, uh, this was all done. This was one of my first collection. I painted live mm -hmm. all of it on Periscope. And wow. uh, all my community gave ideas and the names uh, are all by my community. They named all these ladies. So we decided wow. it started with a lady with a pink, uh, with a hat, with the flowers on top, the seconds down. Uh, and uh, Belle, she's Belle. So what we did, and then they said, oh my God, it would be amazing if we do like women from all over the world because it started just with one i said that's exciting what about we do that so every week i would say okay so which country shall we do next so they will like oh can you do like a mongolian girl and mongolian girl is one of my favorite oh can you do an african girl you know do a black girl so i did a black girl and then i thought hold on i need to do another one you can just have you know and oh can you do like an asian so every time they would suggest me a different one so it was more like empowering women but i kind of uh, put a lot of swarovski crystals on them so they have mm. a lot of gems glued in them wow. and a lot of uh, uh like pearls and uh, different media and uh, some glitter glue and things like that but they are very very beautiful they look like 3d so yeah I, that I was my them. collection oh, sorry this I'm one is cow. Moving this yeah. <laughs> Scott, Tell me about this. can you hear me yeah no i can yeah. hear you just fine these uh, cows well i have many more photos but i thought i'll just choose a couple wow. of cows uh, <laughs> these were done at uh, uh, different shows here in uk uh with a company that i i was doing demo for uh, uh -huh. showcasing their kind of markers and uh yeah with pebio i went there and drew well pretty much painted the whole cow just using uh, marker pens and uh, really oh, no way yeah. wow yeah so the the one <laughs> below fun. is the first cow the second one i think it was neck birmingham i was uh, by amrit's uh, neck of the woods <laughs> yeah wow. so yeah that's uh, big sculptures and doing those that's super neat and there's some and of these yeah, tell us about these. Uh... Yeah, these are a little bit, you know, portraits. One is uh, the the big one is uh, watercolors. The ones on top is inspiration was the video. Uh, be a lady, they said, but I kind of went a step further and I did one. Uh, be a gentleman, they said. It's like pretty much words that hurt us and and affect us as human beings uh things that uh people say to women uh those are is a video going around uh, be a lady they said you can google search and cynthia nixon uh talks from the sex in the city uh and uh, yeah things that affect women uh, but also or things that we are told not to do uh, mm, and, right. uh, but then I thought, hold on, because men suffer just the same. So I did one for the men because I am a mother of a boy. So, mm -hmm. and I like think that I have to empower men as much as I empower women. Yes, I love empowering women, but I want to empower all human. It doesn't matter what you are, man or woman, because everybody has feelings. If we get hurt, I say, uh, we all bleed. You know, I might bleed coffee because I drink too much coffee, but we all bleed pretty much. <laughs> so uh, the feelings are the same, a male or female. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. This, this is one the last is, one here. Tell us about yeah. this. Yeah, I only send a few, a couple really uh -huh. quick. Uh, but this is the fashion from um, my fashion collection. Mm -hmm. So those are all hand painted clothes wow. that I have done. And uh, everything bags uh, the skirts the dresses the shoes everything is like hand painted and i did uh yeah men need that lifting sorry i'm like reading but yeah i love i mean everything i'm wearing today my jeans my top uh i hand paint so i have this uh, bespoke wearable art line that i do and uh, i work a lot on commissions and i collaborate with other designers uh 
to whatever they they would do a design they would need like painting and uh, we come up with ideas and i just create something for them but pretty much i love passion and i love uh painting on clothes this is my passion pretty much oh yeah that's the video yes yes exactly but thanks so yeah. much for sharing and, that uh, and uh that's it i do everything everything i did not have a <laughs> chance to send you more uh pictures of the mixed media and all that but, uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is great join me live and see all that but i'm um, loving this back to you yeah no really fun show and tell i'd love to uh transition to liza and uh let's look at a few of these images uh of your work i will start uh, at the top here with aoc um oh. and mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit, so the voice of Liza Donnelly here, uh, subscribe to Liza and Bobby and our other artists here, um, if you haven't already. So. Yeah, um, thank you, Peter. Uh, I like the idea, idea of you having a, a wig made by Bobby. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna need one painted on soon, yes. <laughs> it, you look terrific. It no, not to say, I mean, you look terrific now, but I'd, I'd like to see you in a wig. Um, <laughs> well, thank you, we can so, uh, see what happens. <laughs> This um, this is my live draw from yesterday, and um, it's not typical of my work, but uh, I mean, that's my drawing style, but it's a portrait of AOC who did the video recently, a very powerful video about um, the Capitol siege on January 6th and how she was in the building and felt threatened. And, it, and then she admitted that she uh, had been the, she's the survivor of sexual assault and how she connected the two. So I just thought it was a very powerful, um, video and uh needed to be amplified even more not that she needs my amplification but why not um so I, i've done this a little bit during the live draws during the summer when there were the black lives matter um protests and, and various people uh, murdered i would do portraits of them um to and and with words sometimes to sort of focus on them but it's it's very it's a new thing for me to do this and i do this live drawing so um Right, it's very powerful. I'd love to move on uh, to one of your next ones here about pride. I know this is a big, uh, common theme that yeah. uh, in your work. Yeah, well, that I did also during the summer when um, mm. Pride Month, I think it was, uh, or in, no, it was International Pride Day, and I just did that drawing. And I do um, this particular one, and um, many of my drawings are are straight on the paper with pen because I feel like I want the, the viewers to get a feeling of what it's like to just get it out there on paper. I'm not careful, I just sort of let it go. And my style is like polar opposite of Bobby's, which is <laughs> incredible. Um, mine uh, is much looser, I go for the loose. I want, I want it to be loose, I want it to be um, uh, almost, uh, emotive in that way. I don't know if you know the work of James Thurber, but my work, that's how I learned to draw cartoons was through, through a cartoonist named James Thurber, who, whose work was very amorphous and sort of childlike, but very mm -hmm. uh, expressive. And that's what I, that's what I try to do. Um, well, we'll have to check that out. Maybe someone can share a, a link to him. Yeah. Uh, also want to yeah, highlight uh, one of your, this looks like a New Yorker. It is. Uh, yeah. Here, so uh, Liza, for those who don't know, uh, it you know, longtime contributor to the New Yorker and uh, many other national outlets and publications. But tell us about this one and why you chose it uh, to show off today, Liza. Well, I, I didn't know which one to choose because I have a lot of, like Bobby, I have a lot of images. But this one was done right before the pandemic and sold to the New Yorker, and it's a woman saying, uh, "You fermented everything," and. Um, the man, no, sorry, the man saying that he's teasing his wife who's gone on a fermenting craze. And I, that's what I like to do cartoons about, if I can, is cartoons about culture, about mm -hmm. things that we're talking about, things that the trends that are happening. I also do political right. cartoons for the New Yorker, but this was a, this was a trend and still is a trend of people fermenting <laughs> things. And I, I just thought it was funny. Uh, and then it became uh, sort of popular. I'm not gonna say viral, but it was popular um, during the pandemic. Because it's right, you know, I was gonna say this, this certainly <laughs> seems very uh on point with uh quarantine yeah. life for many of us, yeah. yeah. I've yet to ferment anything, um, 
but it's probably only a matter of time here. So. That's right. <laughs> the longer the pandemic goes, the more we're going to do things like that, like banana bread or sourdough mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'd love to share a couple of your political cartoons here as well. Sure. Um, share this one first here. <laughs> so this one. Yeah, this is a live draw, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. Not doesn't Were need much. Were there events that prompted this in particular, or some? Uh, probably, or? you know, probably, but I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, and I, when Trump was uh, uh, campaigning during the primaries back in uh, uh, many moons ago, <laughs> uh -huh. um, I, um, I I was doing doing a lot of cartoons about him and everybody else who was running for office. And um, I put him in short pants because he's a schoolyard bully. And um, I just think he's a bully. And then when he became president, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll give him a chance. You know, I'll, I'll, out of respect for the office, I'll put him back in, in uh, big boy pants. And I did for a couple of years. And then in the last year of his presidency, I brought back the short pants because he's, he's not really... He's not so much a bully, or if he is, he's he, he's uh, he's having trouble bullying people because he's losing his power. Um, but uh, people are happy that my short pants are back. <laughs> so I see. Yeah, there's some fans here. Uh, some lots of comments. Uh, yeah. Obviously, this is you know political commentary, right? In yeah. your in your work here. So um, you know this is really interesting. Have these been published? I, I put all of my political cartoons on Medium. So I have a column on medium.com, which is a, a really great um, blog platform started by Ed Williams from the from Twitter. And um, I've done political cartoons for other people, uh, The New Yorker, but they're very different than this. They're more, they're subtler. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm an opinion journalist. So these are my opinions and people can disagree with me. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Uh, this is thank you so much for sharing some of your work here and uh Thanks. yeah well maybe you can share a link uh, or you know i can probably share a link to everyone's uh, personal site here in the comments too for folks to, yeah. to find out more i want to transition to uh, michelle and make sure that we cover everyone here um michelle sent a fantastic uh video here let's see if it if it feels like working right now <laughs> i'm gonna switch over thank you liza so much for uh Walking us through some of your work. Great. So, voice of uh, Michelle Alexander or Native Graffiti here. Hey, Michelle, I'm going to put this on and let's see how it works here. Okay. Well, um, basically, I didn't mean to have the music to go with it, but that was um, uh, myself as a child. I had entered a portrait art contest with adults and won the contest. So, that's kind of that but you're seeing a lot of native imagery pottery and things that I work with um, in regalia making transitioning into the way I get expression um, out of my paintings and drawings um, and also just um, I like working with fiber art and mixed media and doing different things um, but again that contemporary idea of uh, graffiti and then charcoal is just a love of mine i love this and this is this is what i started doing on periscope here people like fan art they like you know draw this person this is david boy um again i'm a musician so i love music i love doing mm -hmm. um thank you for cutting it out no, i just <laughs> like, turned it down no it was yeah. it was lovely i just wanted to be sure that uh, okay and this is inktober um actually i'm new to ink I'm new to watercolors. A lot of this is experimentation. Mm -hmm. This is non-referential portrait drawing, in other words, from my own mind. And this last image here is um, something that I can share with you um, that I have chromesthesia. And chromesthesia is a type mm -hmm. of synesthesia. In other words, when I hear music and sound, I see color. And so all of these things are kind of impacted. And what I did live on Periscope were things like this, where I was trying to break into the expressionism. Um, that when I was a finger painting, um, you know, just different things where I'm showing you the color I see right. and, and freeing myself from realism because I, I started out doing wow. realism at a young Powerful. age. I did about 54 
portraits like that one that you just saw um, from people on Periscope. They would send me a picture while I was live and I would draw it while they were in the broadcast and I would have them tell their story. We had this conversation and I would finish the drawing sometimes in a half an hour to an hour because I like to work really fast. <laughs> but um, the whole point of, um, for me, drawing while I'm talking to people live and they're telling me their stories, a lot of the portraits I drew were people who have walked on or passed away. And um, in 2015, also, I lost my husband. So I think I gravitated towards honoring portraits, um, portraits of people um, that inspired me. Um, there's a picture there of John Trudell who, um, his nickname is Graffiti Man, and I thought, you know, that kind of tells the story. I actually met him in person. He does spoken word uh, music with um, Jackson Brown and Jesse Ed Davis, and um, wow. I love listening to his music and drawing, and that frees me from the constraints of maybe traditional art or realism and just being more expressive and getting those feelings out, things that you can't say with words. And that's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted. To, I did some thread portraits for people too. I love to still sew. I love the traditional arts of beadwork and um, all of that. You can see a quilt uh, that I have here. Everybody sees my quilt. Right. Uh, that one right there is shut the fuck up. Excuse my language. I don't mean to offend anybody, but that's literally how I felt <laughs> when I did that self portrait. It was not just after Donald Trump got elected, but it was during the no dapple time um, where I felt like I was being silenced and couldn't say what I wanted to say about being a Native woman in this country and the missing and murdered Indigenous women and um, just all of the issues that were coming to the fore and the activism. And so that was just sort of me venting in a self-portrait. So mm. I apologize, but that is the title of it. <laughs> I know some people don't like that uh, swearing business, but I couldn't think of anything else because those words were used like at me, like by people, trolls in the comments and whatever, they were telling me to do STFU. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, again, the, the traditional pottery, I was raised doing that as well. So that's just something I wanted to share all of the different parts of my yeah. life story in this, this little video. It's, it's beautiful. I love the variety yeah, of mediums and styles here that uh, are represented. Thank you so much for for sharing your work. Uh, I want to be sure to cover uh, Amrit. And I see, Amrit, you've uploaded some images. Uh, yeah, let's go over and uh, hear from Amrit. Amrit, uh, I'm going to put up the first one here. Let's see. Excellent. Amrit, take us through these. Tell us a little bit about these sculptures. Sure. I've just been frantically behind the scenes trying to find images to upload. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, did it. I know, well I done, your do first day so, in the studio, a <laughs> master. Exactly. Yeah. So I, in the last uh, three years, I've done about 15 public art sculptures and five private, private art sculptures. Um, I've raised 60 or 70,000 pounds for charity because, out of them as well. So I get approached by different councils and different cities around the UK to uh, decorate a sculpture, which, which is made out of fiberglass and uh, decorated all hand-drawn, everything is, and hand-painted using um, pens and, and acrylic. And so top left, you can see an owl, which was the only public art campaign that went last year because of the pandemic. So I was really happy that uh, owl did theirs um, in the trail and that was really popular. The middle is a brand new trail uh, this year, actually, is to raise money for the NHS. And that's going to be part of a very exclusive uh, exhibition, which is going to tour London, Birmingham, Edinburgh, Belfast, and maybe even Cardiff. The one on the top right is was in on the Isle of Man, was a wallaby. Bottom left was in Jersey. It was a gorilla that sold for 25,000. So it was really cool at auction. The middle wow. is a sculpture in Edinburgh and the bottom right is a sculpture in uh, Worcester. Now this year I've got sculptures in Lincolnshire, Derby, Kent, Worcester, Aberdeen, maybe some others which haven't been announced yet. So I've got a ton of sculptures, which are, I've got a lighthouse in the other side of the studio, a 10 foot tall lighthouse, which is going to Aberdeen. Wow. So yeah, that's this picture is just the fun I get to do with uh, not only creating art, but bring joy to people who see them in, in public, but also raise money for either a, a children's hospital or a hospice. Yeah. Wow. These are amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, your process here and, uh, how you create these amazing works? 
Yeah, sure. So um, they arrive blank. Uh, they're made out of fiberglass and um, they're primed. So the first thing that I need to do is sand them. And in fact, majority of sculptures I've done, I have actually live streamed, um, which has been awesome just to showcase. Uh, the giraffe was live streamed. The one in the middle, the Uruli, um, apologize if I said that wrong. Um, the one in Jersey, a live stream. So my process is sometimes um, the councils would just literally give me a sculpture because they know my style and they know my style is very popular. It brings in a lot of media attention, which is good for the local city to bring in tourism. Or I will submit a few designs and they'll choose from it. Um, so the first thing is, is taking your design, which is normally flat on 2D on a, on a paper, A4, and, and putting it onto a 3D sculpture like that, which is not easy to do. You know, the first time I did it, I was a bear in 2017, and I was just like, I forgot about the sides. You know, like I designed the front <laughs> and back. I was like, what? Like when you see the sculpture, I'm like, what about the size? Like, so I had to completely change the design. So it was kind of like, how do you maximize the sculpture so every angle is seen? And for me, I want it as bright as possible. So if someone is like a mile away, they see it, they walk over because humans are lazy. You know, if they see something from like a mile away, they'll just take a, a blurry picture. I'm like, done. So I want to, my job is to bring them to my sculpture. Mm -hmm. So I experiment with vivid paint fluorescent metallic um glow in the dark but also very bold patterns as you can see yeah i love it they're so fun yeah they have so much energy which i can yeah. you know feel even That's through the screen here yeah good i, I know my job well then <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want to uh, segue to some of these uh, uh, and tell us about this uh are these these don't look like sculptures to me I, i'm uh, no expert <laughs> but what tell me about your two is this 2d yeah, yeah. So these are flat. Uh -huh. um, so this is actually um, where my kind of art brand took off. And this is what I live streamed on Periscope was I started a animal campaign, which is like draw one a month, um, an mm -hmm. animal, but reinvented in my style, you know, so it's not like like for like, but each animal is inspired by a different culture. So in there, you've, you've got Greece, Native American, you've got uh, mm -hmm. A Maori, you've got Samoan, you've got South American. So I choose a culture. I do a lot of research into the pattern work and incorporate that wow. within my artwork. I live stream everything from start to end. It's done on A3, um, A3 paper, ink, mm -hmm. and color tone markers. So I've got a lot of color tone markers behind me. So that's exactly right. exactly wow. what I do it. Yeah. And on it. the right is kind of the evolution of it, which is um, covering the entire back in uh, intricate ink art. So yeah, it's fun. They're lovely, yeah. Wow, and uh, equally fun and vibrant. Um, tell me about this uh, third one here that you've uploaded. Uh, is this one? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's just amazing. So the reason why I want to show this is it was significant for me because this was the first time I wor I worked with a big brand. So I was very early in my art career. Uh, 2017 I did this so literally a few months after sharing my art for the first time and my first big project it was with Amazon Prime so Amazon Prime got in touch with me they wanted to do a massive TV campaign and they wanted me to create an artwork based on the logo of a TV show and so mm -hmm. this is what I created and it was live streamed and it was absolutely epic it was vibrant it was uh, a, st a stallion so um I'll, I'll always remember this one because it was one the biggest uh job that i did but two it was kind of bringing in uh, my style of an icon that was already popular in the tv show yeah marvelous wow that's and, as uh, much as i could show you that i could find uh -huh. out there's like a ton of other stuff that <laughs> you were you, yes <laughs> you were pressed for time and these are remarkable yeah really appreciate that i'd love to invite everyone back uh on screen to take some questions for a few minutes if you all have time and uh maybe we can let's see maybe we can segue to that let's see here so i see bobby has stepped out for a minute uh but we have a number of questions from the audience just want to say you all are incredibly talented and uh, it was so fun to see those i know everyone in the comments has uh, echoed that as well um but tell us a little bit about you know what are uh, some of the projects you're working on these days currently while we wait for some more questions to come in uh, maybe we can start uh with liza what are you working on now um well, as I think I mentioned in the beginning, I'm I'm writing an updated version of my book, Funny Ladies, which is a history of the, the cartoonists of the New Yorker who are women. And um, 
New Yorker started in 1925. So, and the book uh, was published in 2005. So it needed to be updated. There's many more women drawing cartoons for the New Yorker now. And um, many more women drawing cartoons in general, which is really fantastic. So that book is due out in the fall and I'm uh, working on it now. And I may do some interviewing of women cartoonists online on um, broadcast interviews with them. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something I'm thinking about. Um, Very cool. We'll yeah. love to see that on HAPS. Yeah, that's really amazing. Yeah, thank you. Um, Michelle, can you Michelle, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your current projects right now and what uh, folks can expect if they subscribe, which they totally should do uh, to <laughs> each and every one up here. And uh, yeah, tell us what uh, what things you're working on. Well, um, because COVID, I'm no longer doing the chef thing. And I'm in this place now where broadcasting, thanks to HAPS, I'm not just saying this, but I left Periscope last summer because it was just getting too difficult um, to go online. I think I did maybe one or two Inktober broadcasts and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> because for me, interacting is so important. And um, I do a lot of, I really am very proud of doing a series of contemporary native heroes of mine. That's one. I like doing um, a lot of different cultural heroes. I think the last drawing I did was here on HAPS was Martin Luther King. I have never drawn him before. And there's just something about when you draw a person, you really enter into their story and you get to tell it not only to other people, but kind of like to yourself, you get to read their face. You get to study them. You get to learn them. You get to see totally. their eyes. So um, I, I'm working on um, a portrait series of cultural heroes of mine, as well as musical influences i have like a series i want to do my goal is to do i would say 50 portraits this year um we'll just not get too ambitious with that but um i want to do heroes of mine and most of them are in the music industry um many of them are native american and i love exploring the indigenous roots of rock and roll i'm a rockhead myself i played a lot of uh in a lot of bands and stuff when i was younger and i'm really into music so i, I just want to explore the, the 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 life stories of all these people that i'm drawing and the other thing that the chromesthesia thing um, I really want to do a series on that as well. So do more acrylic paintings this year. Uh, those are the two things. The third thing is I don't have a website. I don't have a place to funnel anything. I've never really like thought about that because usually I've done my art in person, sold it in person. So this is going to be a new experience for me. And I really hope that I can like link some stuff up and I start getting my art out to you guys through HAPS. I really love this platform for posting and maybe a link for a website eventually, that would be really great. So I'm looking forward to, you know, taking it to the next level. I love it. That's great. Amazing. Bobby, you're back. Sorry, you dropped out there. Uh, yeah, I just couldn't work. I was trying to get in and he just kept saying connecting, but nothing was happening. But yeah, I'm back now. I'm back. Good, good, good. Uh, tell us what you're working on currently. Oh, currently. Currently, I'm working on my book, uh, first of all, and I'm putting together uh, all the photos, trying to get proper professional photos of all my artwork, my antique school. I, I must have over 700 pieces altogether. I have boxes that I haven't opened from previous exhibitions around the world. So now is after 11 years in UK, it's time to unpack <laughs> my, wow. my boxes from the attic. But yeah, this, I need to get rid of uh, a lot of art so I can create other artworks and uh, we're doing my new website that was going to be only with art and going to start selling because until now I only work with uh, just uh, commissions and whatever like collectors that I have uh, but um, yeah I haven't sold any of the artworks that I've done live but I need to get back to doing art for me my projects not just let's do tutorials but i'm going to stream a lot of that on hubs uh, my process and uh, let people in my world and what i do because 
I don't just want to stick, you know, it's fine. I, I will continue little tutorials of whatever people mm -hmm. want me to do, but I, I need to get creative and do my own things too. So, but yeah, they're going to see all the journey. So pretty much that's it and working and uh, trying to bring as many creatives on hubs so we can build this community. I'm working into getting together a lot of artists. Um, I have an Insta group that I'm adding artists. I'm lit. Uh, you're going to get an invite soon. Well, after this broadcast. But yeah, I want um, creatives to have hubs as their home to showcase their talents, to share uh, their vision with the world, inspire uh, people. And uh, we're going to do like like the pass, pass the parcel, you know, pass that go. Mm -hmm. But I want also to have a few different artists, so say four of us on screen, and we can pick one subject. Maybe people can uh, throw in ideas mm -hmm. and we That's can cool. uh, translate it how in our style. Uh, and have people see that, how different artists can take uh, the, the same subject and translate it in their, you know, their vision. So it, it will be like a good, good thing to go. And, I love that uh, I idea. Also want to do, yeah, I also want to do this um, every day, like an artist could be when our channels, because you guys are working on channels. So when we have our art channel, right. uh, mm -hmm. Everybody, all the artists uh, have to, you know, they can take people in their studio and show uh, their artwork showcase. So it's kind of a, a mini, mini exhibition. So it will be great to showcase the work and you never know who is watching and what kind of collaborations go from that. And uh, it's like right. an exhibition, virtual exhibition. I love it. Yeah, let's let's do, do it. Too. You know, it's a yeah, perfect platform for that but the artists the, the creatives especially yeah so neat yeah Amrit, so what are you working on now it sounds like you have a lot of irons in the fire too so to speak <laughs> pretty much yeah so um for me it's i'm at a very privileged stage right now where i get to pay other creatives um which i think is mm. something which is a dream you know when you get to win grants and win jobs and you have your own studio for me it's giving back now so um there's a number of things is that we just recently finished a collaborative project called collaborative artists which i set up at the start of the pandemic which was funded by the british council and arts council in england where we work with seven international artists and um, and work looking at what digital collaboration during the pandemic means and it's been five months of, of mentoring these creatives um four from the uk and then uh, two from Pakistan and one from Bangladesh, and it's been the most amazing journey ever. Um, we had our launch for our short film that we launched uh, on Saturday, and it's been a, it's been really well received. So that was a first project, and now we're already getting a lot more requests for people to um, for they want us to kind of collaborate with um, UK and American artists as well, so I can then pay more artists and have like maybe ten, five in America, five over here, and 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 all over the place. So that's a really exciting project. Other ones is that I'm uh, again run a number of digital boot camps around the UK. Uh, last year we managed to train 250 young creatives uh, and teach them how to pitch, present, uh, edit videos, um, body posture, and uh, green screening, script writing. So that was massive, and I can't wait to um, run a few of these digital boot camps this week, uh, this year as well. And in terms of artworks as well, I definitely want to get back into uh, more interesting art because a lot of the work has been for big brands and big projects. So I'm looking forward to, that's the reason why I love live streaming and I haven't done live stream for a while is because live stream was a platform where I could just do personal work, you know? And so I need that back. And so the thanks Bobby for kind of dragging me here because I can now start my personal projects back up again, which nice. I've sold all of them so far. And so I want to do more of those. So yeah, there's a lot happening. I've definitely missed them out. There's, there's so much happening at the moment, in fact. But, um, oh yeah, actually we've, um, We've recently won a six-figure grant for a brand new immersive tech project. So it's working with artists and content creators to produce a new immersive tech project. Uh, that's massively exciting, and that's going to happen uh, in the next month. So wow. there's just there's a lot of very exciting things happening at the moment. I'm just I can't wait to share them when I can, but uh, I will be. Oh yeah, and, and my second culinary book is going to be published this year, hopefully. That's Lovely. all for now. <laughs> That's great. 
we had a question uh, that I'll just pose to the group uh, that was from the comments here earlier saying, you know, I think it was uh, Vegan Doe, was it Doe Darling who was saying, uh, you know, she also is an artist, but uh, is, you know, sometimes uh, a little anxious about being, you know, distracted in a process while engaging with the audience. How do you all multitask? You know, it, it's clearly um, something that takes a certain, you know, level of practice. Uh, but any tips out there for artists who are, you know, on the verge maybe of uh, doing some, some live art? It's just practice, I, I, really. The more you do I, it, the better you get. And uh, you you try to manage, because I invited, this is, this is Mrs. Colorberry. She is very famous. I mean, she does resin art uh, all over the world. Mrs. Colorberry is like, but uh, we did this uh, live painting together, and I streamed that on Periscope, and she could not concentrate. She's like, how? How do you do it? you know, read the comments, paint and answer questions and you don't miss a question. And it's another skill set you develop by broadcasting. That's how we do it because we have to keep track of what we're doing and the comments and saying hello. And then I remember, I have good memory, thank God, but that uh, develops with broadcasting, I think as well. Uh, but I remember whose mom is sick, you know, who had the baby. So I have to continue conversation. How's the family? But yeah, just by doing it, I mean, like <laughs> practice makes perfect. And you're gonna, it's gonna be like, you know, in your sleep, you're gonna just communicate, but yeah. Very cool, Michelle. I, 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 did, I definitely want to feel this one as a person again, uh, high functioning autistic, and I'm seeing colors to music. I, I, no one's more challenged than I am. I don't think <laughs> with overwhelming, being overwhelmed. And so the first thing I do is I create an environment in my studio that's conducive to focusing, whether it's the lighting or the music or just shutting out other sounds. And, um, you know, it, she's right. The more you do it, the more it becomes kind of a routine. I'm notorious for missing comments, so you know what I do? I have moderators and I have my posse, just like you do, Bobby. I have my people that interact and engage with people and help me. Um, they will alert me and say, you know, circle back or whatever. So I have, uh, it's kind of a communal experience with those that are, in the comments themselves, they help me keep track of the comments. They help me keep keep me on track because you can get so lost in the drawing. Um, but once you get started and you have this routine um, of you know you stop, you pause, you look at the comments, you go back to drawing. You can even say, "Guys, I may miss your comments for a few minutes. I'm concentrating on this eyeball right now." <laughs> You know, I mean, people are very understanding. You, they, they really will repeat the question. Um, I love that we can scroll back, but it, it does take a little bit. And I have to say, and Amrit can actually be a testimony to me, because we met in 2016. It's mm -hmm. actually improved my ability to communicate. Live streaming has changed my life in that way. Wow. I um, have not had i've i've taught i've i've taught in the kitchen i've mm -hmm. you know made presentations but there's been nothing like that idea that i feel like i'm talking to people i know i'm just having conversation with friends and that's all it really is and so you lose all of the other stuff that makes you nervous or makes you feel like you're missing comments or whatever anxiety you have you literally it just literally leaves your body so i don't mm -hmm. know how to explain it but um there's just something about art that you can't put into words, and that's beautiful. Mm, well said. Yeah, but that's we don't so really have to talk either, because you can do silent stream if you want. Mm. Just put some background music, because the art does not need words. Everybody can express it how they want. They can see and feel. So it's not anything, you know, it does not have language. It, it mm. gives you the feel. So whatever you... Uh, grab and you feel from that piece that you are watching just enjoy it and you don't have to talk even if you don't feel comfortable so it's it's no point so if you don't want to talk don't talk if you want to say a few words here and there you can 
but yeah, people always are understandable. As you said, Michelle, they they would just tell me, oh, you missed the comments, scroll up, and I would go up and just read. But uh, now with Hubs, what I like with Hubs is that you can highlight comments right mm. here yes. uh, right. on screen. I love the creative. So, but some third inside my head that tells me I'm good enough. I'm not good enough, and that my art self. I can't. Yes, Marvin should have been here. I'm ready to We'll have another edition of this. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll have. We were out CS yesterday with that tutorial. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, CS had uh, a tutorial of how to I'm connect OBS uh, with the studio. Marvin, check him out, man. You'd love it because it's like stuff you'd enjoy. It's done, Amazing like, 3D and VR. I'm, I am yeah. looking forward to. I'm looking forward to. Uh, live stream obviously but at the moment it's all a bit alien but live stream is live streaming there's just no two ways about it i think the biggest thing that i want to say i mean i know that doe is a pro live streamer anyway so she's just we need to sort her out because she's definitely can do this right she's, she's very good out. at drawing you know? she does really you good, excellent stuff. drawings excellent but, um, and she's a brilliant artist as well I like brilliant artists but the main thing is that i want everyone in here to understand that the confidence growth in everyone that i've seen everyone here is absolutely epic. I remember Michelle having a meeting. We had to do something with a bunch of other artists, and there was one who was very angry, and I had to oh. manage these bunch of artists. Was, and Michelle was one of them. Michelle was very underconfident. She wouldn't speak up. She couldn't speak up. She couldn't put her foot down, and 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 tell all the other two artists what um, she wanted to say. But over time, through live streaming, through she and she was petrified of live streaming. I knew that she <laughs> for the first many two times. Years. You know? Yeah, and so I think we life, had conversations, didn't we? You helped me yeah. so much. And so she grew the confidence, and now I can't believe the person who I'm, I'm watching. So like, just notice the, the the growth that you get in confidence. I'm a natural intro as well. So the fact that I can do public speaking, the fact that I did a TEDx talk, you know, the fact that I, like I can now talk, but after this, I need to now not speak to anyone for like five days. So. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> so it's oh fine. my gosh. I love you so much, Amrit. I almost want to cry out of joy because I just, it's just, it's just like, um, like Bobby says, we're like artists reunited, like the best of Periscope is kind of coming back, but this is 2.0 and I want to throw this out here to everybody. Does anyone want to be a live portrait sitter for me? Because guess what? I could literally take you, I could literally do your drawings right now while you're all talking. I could draw you. And by the time we're all done, I should have something that looks like Amrit Singh or, or Peter wow. Wigan. Well, that's <laughs> Peter quite an Singh. offer. Someone take it. Seriously, I, I, I actually, um, one of the things I did with an art challenge was to see how fast I could draw a portrait. And I'm down, I can do a portrait in five minutes if I can try. I mean, it's obviously more expressive, but I, I'm down to five minutes. But realistically, a half an hour to an hour is all I need. So I would love to have people come in and I could just draw you while you're, because I, in COVID, we don't have that. I, I miss having a live model. Mm. My cat's no longer here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so funny. We decided that if we do it like artists, we can, we can draw each other in our own style. Bobby is one of the first ones. She knows, she, she, she sort of knows that I'm going to do that. Maybe she doesn't, but um, yeah, surprise, no, no, no. Uh, you're oh, definitely the no. most beautiful it. person I've Let's met inside it. and out, and I want to draw you so badly. And it's I want to awesome. draw Amrit with a blue turban. Oh my God, one, on one of the meetups, my jacket, my beautiful royal blue jacket. <laughs> <laughs> we did much. Well, Amrit has the best eyes. <laughs> Out of everybody right. here, I I'm going to say you have the best eyes. You have this epic picture with my jacket <laughs> matching. <laughs> Help! I'm rescuing from these ladies. <laughs> well, we're almost out of time. Liza, I'd love to hear from you before we sign off about any oh, tips. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. Um, uh, what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Enjoy listening to you guys. Yeah, this um, one. <laughs> yeah what was the main? Um, Any tips for? I think we started with oh, right. uh, suggestions um, for artists who haven't live yeah. streamed who might be interested. Well, I just I lose my um, self consciousness and and just sort of like I think it was Michelle said just it's like I'm talking to friends and um, 
I'm just drawing and I, I pause uh, because I have to concentrate on a certain line or a couple of lines. But um, just, uh, and I often talk about politics when I'm drawing. So, and that's difficult, but I don't pretend to know everything. I'm just giving my opinion. Like I'm, well, during the pandemic, I, I'm, I'm feeling um, anxious, you know, drawing about that. I'm, I'm worried for the healthcare workers and drawing about that. Um, uh, worried about the Black Lives Matter protests and, and you know, just drawing about feelings and drawing and and expressing that in words and drawings. So so that's that's uh and I, and I've lost some inhibition in sharing my feelings verbally, but also lost inhibition in drawing. In that, um, you know, I just put pen to paper and not worry about exactly where the pen's going to go. And there's going to be mistakes. People watch me make mistakes, and that's fine because that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. So. Um, also. It's been a great, it's been a great um, learning curve for me. This the, the live broadcasting. I'm not as, as uh, seasoned as you guys are on it, but I I'm I'm enjoying it. And the and the the tablet drawings that I do when we're not uh, stuck at home are mm -hmm. uh, much more fluid and much more um, uh, immediate, even than the paper drawings. And um, right. Michelle, I do I do portraits of people in in a few like under five minutes just yeah. impressions of people with a few lines exactly um, and um, I love it and like you said earlier it's about getting to know the person and sometimes you can capture them in a second but sometimes it can take longer but um yeah, yeah. I love your drawings and as Thank I you. do precise and stuff but I do lose art too it's just that I never show things that I do personally at home I have this oh. amazing book you probably know Richard Williams as um, animator and he does cartoons and is like amazing so i have the bible the animator bible uh and uh, yeah i kind of take a lot from that when i do my personal things but those are like when i sit down and i want to unwind and relax and yeah. kind of just distress and i do my personal things but i never do like the loose art i i focus when i do on here uh, it's maybe what people want me. So that's why mm. I said now it all uh, on house, I have to change that because it becomes boring after a while. And if I mm. don't feel passionate doing it after a while, I don't mm -hmm. want to do it. So I'm going to mm. do my own pro projects and I'm going to share what I will do. Uh, so I can kind of get out what I have inside. So probably some, some of my personal projects, I'm going to show people and, uh, what I do instead of just focusing, let's do some flowers because now I become like flowers and fruit lady. No, no, no. Also, also what, I love doing, what I love doing with people is um, experimenting with with materials. Like I, yeah. I always work with pen and ink and watercolor pretty much, but sometimes I'll just get the the pastels out and get a large brush out and, and and play around with that and show people what you know isn't this fun we can look what we can do with this and um that's that's almost like being in a in a art class yeah i think it's one fun. of the biggest things that's missing at the moment is play you know like everyone's so yeah. in a rush to grow up and then live a professional life is that they've lost that <laughs> ability to play and i never have <laughs> But that's what's come back in the pandemic, you know, the ability to get back to basically doodling, drawing, pottery, all that kind of stuff. And people are, are feeling good, you know. I think mental health plays a massive role in this and we shouldn't yeah. forget how important play is for our mental health, especially during this time. Yeah. And Liza, I've been the first time seeing your work. I absolutely love your work, Liza. Your, your, your work reminds me of Quinton Blake, the illustrator for Rodol. Oh, oh. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Amazing. Well, thank you all so much for your time. We are about I out of play the other day. I, I, I thought I need to play and I need to do some little sculptures with all with my son. So yeah, I'm gonna be getting dirty with clay. You say <laughs> well there you go, there you go. I, I I've you never go. grown up. We'll play together. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. We're done. It's on Saturday, it sounds right? Great. You know, I'm super excited about the new collaborations. We'd we'll love to see, you know, some 
uh, teamwork happening and some experimentation, uh, you know, aesthetically, really, really cool. Um, want to just thank each and every one of you uh, here on screen with me today, as well as all of the viewers and commenters. Uh, you know, really grateful for your time and the opportunity to uh, you know be here and and learning about uh, your work and and. Uh, Especially for, I think, the folks in the UK who it must be after midnight now, staying up late. <laughs> wow. Yeah. One o'clock in the morning here. One, one a.m. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, yeah, this, this was great, Peter. Thank you so much. I've, yeah, yeah I had a great time here. Thank we'll you. definitely encourage well, folks to watch the replay if you're just uh, catching the end of it uh, and you share this uh, as well as subscribe to everyone here on screen. Yeah, thank you very much, thank Peter. You. Thank you, Bobby, for dragging me thank here. You. I am brand new. Please thank be you. nice to me. I am very excited. <laughs> we'll try. We'll try. Yeah, I'll subscribe. I think I'll subscribe. Give you the full tutorial on how to broadcast on hubs after this broadcast. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> love it. That's the after party right there. Go check yeah. it out. Uh, so Peter, <laughs> who are you going to be inviting next time? I think some musicians would be awesome as well. So, so we do have, have yeah, we have a series <laughs> here. Fun. Exactly. So next week is slated, actually. Funny that you mentioned uh, for the musicians uh, yeah, and performing artists. Uh, but, you know, we'll keep doing this. I got a suggestion here from Helen for photographers round yes. table. Yes. Oh, that would be yeah. good. Mm -hmm. I need a good photographer. <laughs> 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 I do. I need some tips. I don't know. I'm, I'm just playing it by ear. <laughs> right. Right. Well, we'll make sure, you know, these, uh, oh, Pablo is just arriving now. Pablo, you're late to the party, bud. <laughs> Pablo so. is uh, our other community manager and leader here. Um, so we're going to wrap it up for now, everyone. But uh, thank you. Have a wonderful day or, or night or evening, whatever time it is. And uh, hope to see you again soon here on HAPS. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you.